I'm nearing the end of my goal month where I'm doing a diverse series of races and events. The other week, I just completed a 155-mile, 16,000 feet of climbing challenge. And this coming weekend is going to be my last event, which is a criterium. You may be asking yourself, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, the challenge for me is that I'm 69. Hey, second community, this is Steve Grusis, the Cycling Greek. Typically, what I like to do is stay toward the front part of the pack, just so I don't get gapped should there be an attack or some huge surge. If you look at the little map insert in the upper right hand corner, you'll see an example of why. We started this race with 31 riders, and at the four and a half minute mark, we're down to about 22 or 23. With this being just over a 15 mile race, I was a little surprised to see the fireworks starting. The main reason I'm doing this whipped race is that although I'm on a bit of a tape before this weekend's race, I needed to get some high intensity work in. Now you may be thinking, I could have done an interval workout outside, but outside, it was 107 degrees. I did do a 30-30 workout yesterday when it was 103 degrees, and that's what I felt when I bridged up to this attack. What I felt were my quads, after remembering that it's not recommended to do two hard workouts two days in a row, especially if you're old. Because it was so early in this race, I was hoping that attack would be it. But no, there were a number of strong riders in this race and they were motivated to form their own group. As another example of why I stay toward the front group, least try to, is if you look at again at the map insert in the upper right hand corner, you'll see that our pack has split again. Now, the, uh, the pack, the blue pack that's right behind mine, they're going to reconnect. Comparing the energy I'm using to stay with this front group, I believe that chasing pack is using more to reconnect. It is now the neurocyclist in the front trying to push the pace. He's hoping that as the other group starts to connect and that they're going to slow down because they're a bit tired, that he's able to establish a small breakaway. I obviously see what's happening here and I want to be part of that breakaway, but my legs are getting close to screaming. I've only raced about three miles and already I'm managing my energy so I don't get dropped. In spite of the best efforts of the very strong in this group, some of the chase group is able to reconnect. We are now down to a pack of 15 to 18. Jumping to just under 10 miles to go, 39-year-old John Abbott from the United States is trying to sneak off the front and puts a little more power to do so. He is soon thereafter countered by 56-year-old Brad E. Triple X Racing, also from the United States. Brad was brought in about three-quarter mile later after he was left to burn a little bit. Things stayed muted for about a mile, and then the attack started. I couldn't tell who it was that attacked, but I was hoping that the pack would let them go since we were quite not halfway into the race and my legs were feeling it. In fact, I was starting to manage how I was pedaling. That means I was using as easy gear as possible to get the job done. Ordinarily, the gear to be using in this type of race would be bigger. However, due to yesterday's workout, and probably because I'm an older guy, my legs were starting to get bogged down. And then there are the situations like this, where you just have to use that bigger gear. In situations such as this, I do a couple of things in order to attempt to survive. The first is I slightly change my pedal stroke to emphasize different muscles, like what I'm doing on this climb, which I didn't expect. Initiating the pedal stroke more from my hips. By doing this, it helps to prevent my quads from bogging down. The second thing that I do, and only because of the shape that I'm currently in, I let up on the pedal stroke when I can just to get that very quick recovery. Unfortunately, I'm not able to employ that technique on this climb because I've got to keep on it all the time. Now, I'm just trying to stay connected to somebody, somebody close to the front, so they can help drag me up when we get over the top. Obviously, we're all spread out, and looking at that little insert map, I'm toward the back, so I don't have a lot of room for error. I'm currently sitting in 10th position, and we started the climb with 12 people people. Now we have a split and the front splits at least five seconds ahead of me. My heart rate's probably shooting through the roof, but I can't tell because my heart rate monitor went out right before the race, which means Zwift power isn't going to count this race. I'm now in a group of five. There's a group of two that's about two seconds ahead of us, and the lead group of five are four seconds ahead of them. It is now a kilometer later, and that group of two that was ahead of us that we were chasing, one of them, the Hornet's Nest, made it up to that lead group of five, which is now a lead group of six. And the other one, the 39-year-old neurocyclist from the United States, he just came back to us. Now a group of six chasing a group of six that's eight seconds ahead of us. It is now two miles to go. I haven't been able to contribute to the chase. In fact, I've been concentrating on not giving up by letting up that extra pedal stroke and getting dropped and saying I had the best race I could and that's the best I could do because it wasn't. The current situation is that the leaders are about 11 and 12 seconds ahead of us. That group is now a group of five, as Eric Voligen from the United States has dropped off and is now four seconds ahead of us. My group, we're down to a group of four. Soon to be five, as Eric is now about to be swallowed. 
I am in that dichotomous position where I'm trying not to get dropped while at the same time trying to figure out how I can beat the rest of these guys. Since I'm not a sprinter, my typical move is to take off before the sprint starts. From the way I'm feeling, I have absolutely no confidence I can do that at all. Still, nothing adventured, nothing gained. I'm able to position myself at the back, and now I'm hoping that I can stay there. It looks like Eric, who came back to us from the lead group, has the same idea that I do. He wants that back spot to take advantage of the draft to do that final run to the finish, same as I do. So now we're playing chicken. There is now a one and two second gap to the others, and Eric blinks first. The only reason he blinks first is because I'm so tired. I now have a one second gap to Eric, and a three second gap to 47 year old Lightspeed from New Zealand, 38 year old Louis Philippe Lefebvre from Canada, and 49 year old John Abbott from the United States. It took some serious digging from Eric and my part, but with under a kilometer and a half to go, we were able to reconnect. With the effort I just did, how in the world am I going to be able to beat these guys? If you look at the graphics at the bottom, you can see all that orange and red uh, coloring. That's the intensity. So I was going pretty hot. I'm now even having to put out more effort because soon after we connected, John Abbott countered. This was an excellent move on his part. This dislodged Eric and almost did the same to me. We are now within a kilometer. J-Mo from the United States, 60-year-old J-Mo, has been dislodged from the front group and is now 10 seconds ahead of us. The other group is 20 seconds ahead of us. With a half mile to go, for whatever reason that only the good Lord knows, because I certainly didn't, I decided this was the time for me to take off. I was hoping that the others didn't expect such a stupid move from half mile out. Therefore, I was hoping to catch them off guard. Now, I still have that arrow power up that I just started to use. I'm hoping that would give me the extra boost just to get there before they get me. I'm now within about 500 feet. The finish line's in sight, and I'm giving all the bananas I have. Lightspeed passes me with under 200 to go, and Louis Philippe with under 100. He gave everything on that and came in ninth. All right, hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. Check out my other two videos that I have posted in the description below of my previous races and events during this gold month. As always, remember, comment, like, subscribe. The Cycling Greek.